Okay. Um, the recording will be, um, I will share it after right away, um, and then we'll eventually um, caption it and put it on our website. Okay. Um, and I'll also share the slides at the end. So let's get that going. Okay, can you all see this, the uh, the right thing? Yes. Yep. Okay, so um, we are gonna go um, through this. Um, if you wanna ask questions, feel free to jump in. Um, if it's something that we're gonna cover in you know a few minutes later in the, we'll probably ask you to hang on. But we're here for you and to try to make this as understandable as possible. Okay. So it's some of the things that we're going to cover today, um, just the basic insurance uh, changes, medical insurance. Um, we're going to have a focus on the high deductible HSA plans. Um, and then just a little bit about part-time um, insurance, retirement insurance, and a few other random things. Okay. So these are the big, um, most people are in the district run um, HMO. Most people are on the Kaiser HMO um, plan. It's actually going to go up to... Um, 546 if you have it taken out monthly or 548 32 if you have it taken out um, over a 10 month period that's the premium that you will pay every single month whether you are a family or an individual yeah. um, if you're on Sutter it's actually going to stay the same and let's see here if and uh, let's see here uh, WHA HMO is still zero Okay. Um, Araceli, what's up? I'm I'm sorry. Maybe maybe I misunderstood, but I thought there was going to be a change. Hence, why I came today, because I was under the impression that I read that somewhere where it, the 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 monthly was going up. Did for, I get that wrong for, for, for both Kaiser and for Sutter? No, it originally was going to go up to, for Sutter, it was originally going to go up to 114, um, but okay. they, they found some kind of glitch and they put it back down after we announced it to everyone after we bought Oh, it. okay. Yeah, so it's a positive thing, <laughs> which never I happens. Always, I must have missed the update then because uh, I remember. I don't think I sent it out because it was um, in the middle. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's me, not you. Thank you. Yeah. David. Hi, uh, thank you for doing this, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. So very new. I'm on just starting my second year here and actually just uh, rolled into the benefits since I finished benefits with my other employer. But just out of curiosity, why is Sutter um, so much cheaper than Kaiser, even though they're both HMOs? What's what's driving that? Um, they Kaiser bases um, these funds on us like our group um Sutter bases it off the region so that's part of it um also Kaiser um is just more annoying I'll say it that way they think they can get away with it most people are enrolled in Kaiser so they are yeah so it's not partly it's a good reason partly it's just they they, they do it because they can't yeah, I'm just, if I say, if I saw those numbers, if you wouldn't mind, could you scroll back to the last um, table that you just shared? So 53 a month versus 456 a month. So yep. it's eight times the amount and they're both HMOs. That is, that just doesn't make yeah. a whole and lot of sense on the WHA surface. WHA is HMO and it's zero. Um, the, also the co-pays for Kaiser are a little higher than they are for Sutter. which also still would work in a favor. Anyways, if those yeah. are correct, it, that's what it is. That's fine. So just uh, thank you yeah. for clarifying that. Yeah, no worries. Does, so, does anybody have experience with Sutter? I'm always used to Kaiser. Does anybody have experience with Sutter? And, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm actually on to share? Yeah, I'm, on, I'm actually on Sutter and uh, the HMO one, and I love it. I think it's, I liked it better than Kaiser. I feel like you can get um, referrals a lot easier. You can get like... Um, physical therapy a lot easier than you can with Kaiser in my experience. So I, I like, I've never had any problems with it. I would agree. Uh, I would agree. I would just offer that I've been on Sutter forever. And I think that they have much broader, um, even including uh, mental health things. So therapy and all of that stuff's all included, at least in my experience. Um, doctors seem to be better and you're treated, I think more as a 
sort of a person and not just sort of like a cattle going through, you right. know, the huge um, sort of process like I've experienced with, with Kaiser. So it's all good. That's what I've experienced. Okay. Do you hey. think then is it simply that Kaiser, there's more, it's a matter of numbers, there's more Kaisers all around the country than there is setters, so therefore they feel like they can go ahead and charge more? Um, Anybody know? I'm not sure, but this is, yeah. I'm not sure what the answer is, but let's just keep moving on. Let's go with Rick. Thanks. The one thing I've heard repeatedly about Sutter is that it's difficult to get to specialists, that the number of specialists in network is significantly lower. So whereas you know, people get referred to pulmonologists, for example, in Kaiser, and they have a pulmonologist within a couple of weeks, at Sutter, sometimes it takes months. Yeah. Hey, can anybody confirm or deny? I would say that's my experience. Um, it's been a long time since I've been in Kaiser, and and when I was, I didn't need specialists. But um, my my wife is uh, needs specialists now, and we get them um, in Sutter. It does take a while to, to get in the door on that. You can get the referral easily, but it does take like three months sometimes to get your first appointment. But once you're in, it works pretty well. Thank you for that, Anna. You're muted. Sorry, I thought I unmuted myself and I muted myself. Um, I'm wondering if anyone has experience. We've always had our health benefits through my husband's employer and we've been with Sutter a long time and really like our, our doctor and our group, but he's getting ready to retire. So we're planning to switch over to my benefits. And I'm just wondering if anyone's had experience, if they're already Sutter patients, if they've had any hiccups or if it's been pretty seamless to go from one employer's plan with Sutter to another's. Um, I, I did that. I When I went from full-time to um, teaching, I had Sutter before and then it, I had no issues switching over to Sutter doctors. I was able to keep my same primary doctor, um, you know, because you do have to do a new primary doctor um, when you sign up for the new plan. That that's so. Sometimes that could be the only issue if the the your primary is not taking new patients. So you have to start off like you're a new patient, and that might. Even be if you're problem. existing, I mean, I guess that would be a yep. question for the group. I'm existing. Can I keep my doctor? So yeah, that, that's, that's typically yes. Okay. Because I switched, I, um, I was on my wife's and now she's on mine and we stayed in Sutter and we just had to basically tell her doctor and then she did some something and we're, it was fine. Okay. If you and look then, on their website, it, uh, the rating is 2.9 for Sutter. It's incredibly low. And if you look at all the reviews, it's really depressing. I have Kaiser. And it's uh, one of the comments was, is Sutter the same thing as Sutter Health Plus? Because uh, if it is, you know, yeah, I even put it out to Facebook asking people, is anybody on Sutter Health Plus? And the responses I got were one woman was saying her child is three and she's still waiting to get her uh, immunizations from her second year that they keep canceling her appointment. Um, well, I don't know if that's true, but, um, I get immunizations easily, um, and it's not a problem and I can even go in like the next week if I want to. So it's, uh, it, I don't know how I don't have children. So I, that would, I would say I like Sutter. A lot of people do individual experiences may vary, um, but we're not really going to go into those kind of details here, um, because we're just going to mostly talk about prices and how you can switch that makes sense but thank we you may, we may want to point out also that you can change this every year so if you did try switching to sutter and you had a bad experience which is you know is possible yeah um, with anything you could always switch back to kaiser if you were really unhappy with it yeah you can also get a bad doctor you can switch doctors in the middle of the year um so don what's up um, I just wanted to point out, if you look, go back to the last slide about the cost difference, that it's it's really, um, if you look at the plan month, the monthly plan, the premium isn't that different. It's not like 13 times different. It's the fact that 
the district pays for the same amount for each one, which offsets it, right? So it's only four hundred dollars difference from the premium, right? That's but, good point. but because you know, so it's not percentage; it's not thirteen times difference really for the actual premium. Yeah, that that, that is an excellent point, Don. Yeah, it just it, look it feels on our end like it's a huge increase. Um, yeah, Michelle. Hi. Um, yeah, thanks for doing this because I uh, appreciate you guys doing this. I actually live in Lodi, so I just want to put my feelers out there too because I've been with Kaiser. I started, I've been with the district 20 years. It was $0 when when I started and I think 10 years ago they were charging 90 and now, you know, um, so it, we see it here. Um, I, because of this, I am looking I, I don't know if anyone else does live south of Sacramento, but any has does anyone has it, does anyone have Sutter or um, Western Health Advantage, and if they can chat with me, because <laughs> okay. I don't know what hospitals are in network with those. I mean, I've looked, but there's nothing. Um, I, yeah, I just that's part of what I was looking at, but okay. I mean, um, in network. Yeah, I'm not sure if someone wants to jump in on the chat with that one, if they have an answer to that, I, I do that. Um, we will get into how you can still stay with Kaiser and not go broke. If we hang on. Okay. Just <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Thank you. I just thrown out. There. Thank you for saying yeah, that. No worries. Hi, Kay. Uh Yeah. Hi. Can Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Hopefully. Yeah. Because I'm still to. <laughs> Um, I had some other stereo stuff going on here with my uh, phone. Anyway, um, I have a quick question. I'm also a Kaiser uh member about Sutter can one because I think one of the providers you cannot go outside of the service areas how about Sutter can you go outside of the service area yes you want to answer that Stephanie yes you can go out of network so there's just out of network fees no I don't mean out of network I apologize so yeah but you can go national yes if which so if you go if you're somewhere outside of Sutter here in California and you something happens, it's just considered out of network. Yeah, yeah okay. So I mean specifically Sacramento versus Bay Area. So no, I don't, Bay Area, yeah. I, I, I think, I don't know if Bay Area is, is still part of Sutter. I, I think it is like, I know I can go to Davis and, but that, that one, I, I don't, I think you're still within Sutter if you go to the Bay Area, but I'd have to clarify that one. Yeah, because with Kaiser, that's the nice thing. You can go, I can go here in the Bay Area. I'm I'm in Oakland versus, you know, coming to Sacramento and I'm, or Folsom and I'm teaching up there. That was my thing. And then I think the other thing I wanted to know really super quick is so you can switch providers once a year if you wanted to test something out and come back. Absolutely. It's sort of annoying maybe, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, again, Kaiser is going up crazy Sutter, no change. So that's cool. Um, WHA is still zero if you want a zero option. So we're going to talk a lot about high deductible healthcare plans here um, for a bunch of reasons, um, but specifically with Kaiser. If you love Kaiser or you want to stay in Kaiser, but you don't want to pay 453, that's kind of what we're trying to introduce you to here. So do you want to do this one, Stephanie? Sure. Okay. So we have um, the option with Sutter, with Kaiser, and with Western Health to do a high deductible health plan. So the high deductible health plan has similar benefits. There's um, maybe one or two things different um, benefit wise as to what you will be getting, but it's this you have same doctors, same process for referrals. <laughs> Um, with any of the Kaiser, Sutter, or um, Western Health. So what happens is with a high deductible is that you pay the full cost of the medical expenses, um, but that's at the negotiated rate by the insurance company. So you're not paying like just as a private citizen who has no health insurance, you're paying the negotiated rate. And then, um, and once you hit the deductible, then you pay nothing else. Um, so, and, what, and, and which is great because I hit my deductible back in May 
I haven't paid a single dime for anything. And I've been getting MRIs. I've been getting CT scans because I had some health issues. So the high deductible plan, I don't pay co-pays. I don't pay doctor visits, nothing. Um, so meeting this zero dollar deductible is, um, is once you hit it, then everything is free. Can you go to the next? Uh, yes, Rick. Rick. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, this fall in the draw. Um, yeah. So I was just attending the district sponsored presentation on this with the Kaiser representative present. And the explanation given there was that there are actually two thresholds here. There is a deductible threshold and then there's an out of pocket threshold. Yes. And I was left with the impression uh, and explicitly asked this question and was told I was correct that it, it isn't true that you pay nothing after you hit the deductible. It's true that you pay nothing after you hit out of pocket max. Once you hit the deductible threshold, you're still paying co-pays, co-insurance, uh, and some other things. So it's just that you're no longer paying the full price for the service. Could you clarify for me? Thanks. We're going to get to that in a couple slides when we look at that um, compared the difference between the out of pocket and the deductible. So we'll get to that in a couple slides. Yeah, can I make a suggestion? I think there are these are very confusing plans, and I think that it might be helpful, even though I totally get why people have questions right now. It might be helpful if Stephanie goes through all of it, including the, what the deductibles are, what the out of pocket max is, and what that means, and then um, some of it might fall into place, and then we could maybe have questions at that point. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So uh, we'll continue on. So one of the great things about joining the high deductible plan is that the school has a HSA account, which is a health savings account that is tied with our uh, high deductible plan. So what happens is the district is going to set aside and put some money into your high deductible, your, your HSA account every month for 12 months. It's a 12 month um, de uh, deposit. And then on top of it, you can put your own money in on top of that from your payroll as a deduction. And that will, it has a double tax benefit where when you're putting money aside for your uh, medical expenses, but then you're also getting a tax benefit. And I'll show you that a little bit later. And the um, HSA account is actually earning interest um, on top of that. And it's actually really high interest. Um, so, and that does not, um, is not taxable. The, the interest you're earning on your HSA account is not taxable. Another great thing about it, the HSA, unlike an FSA, if you have an HMO with Kaiser Sutter or Western Health, is that the FSA expires at the end of the year. So it's a use it or lose it program. Whereas the HSA card rolls over year after year. So if you especially put in more money, like I'm gonna put in more money into my HSA this next year, and then the following year I can put a little bit less um, and then my deductible is um, gonna be covered and I don't have to, I'm not paying anything out of pocket. I just use my HSA credit card. So um, we're gonna look at um, how much the district puts in to the HSA too. Um, there's some um, eligibility requirements, and this was in the packet from Nicole Keller um, on how, um, if you scrolled it through the packet. Um, so there, if you are 65 or older and on our Medicare or taking out Social Security, you cannot participate in an HSA. So that means you can't do the high deductible plan. Um, or if you're coming up to retirement six months prior to retirement, um, contributions from the district and your contributions have to be um, stopped. Um, you can't have an FSA at the same time as um, a health FSA at the same time as an HSA. You can have the dependent care um, FSA, which is a different type of S FSA program. Um, or if you're covered by another health coverage, um, if like in the military or a college health plan, 
or you're dependent on another health plan. So you can't basically, you can't double dip on have two, um, two health plans at the same time. Next slide. So there are contribution limits of how much you can set aside and put into your HSA program um, um, card. So um, as a single individual, it's capped at 4150 and for a family, it's 8300. So it's, uh, and, and remember your HSA card too, once you leave the district or you leave, uh, leave um, here, you still get to keep that money. That money is yours to use for health plans in the future. You're just not gonna, I don't know if you'll have the credit card or if you have to do paper um, reimbursements, but that is still your money to use after retirement or after you leave the district. Um, so when it comes to our high deductible plans, there's no premium that you're paying um, to the district for on a monthly basis. So it's zero premium. And the district on an individual basis is putting $100 into every single plan, 150 for family for Kaiser and Western Health and 145 for, um, um, for, for, uh, for family, okay? So it's a little bit different. Um, so let's see here. So this combination, so this the HSA card is what I use to pay for all of my uh, medical expenses, as well as it pays for dental and you can use it to pay for eye care. So anything medical related, you can use your HSA card. You don't just have to use it for, if you're part of Kaiser, you don't just have to spend it at Kaiser. I That's why I put extra on my um, HSA card is because I am a, um, I use it for um, other um, other places. I use it to set aside for any if I have dental things that's going to go over my dental coverage or for my um, my glasses that I need every year. The only caveat is that part time faculty unfortunately are not eligible for that district contribution. Um, we have pushed for that. Um, we have gone and asked many times. Um, there are some legal um, legality issues because of the annual year requirement of being an employee and the flexibility um, of uh, adjunct um, not having that um, guarantee of employment. So they cannot get the district contribution, unfortunately. They can still have the HSA card and put their own money into the HSA, um, but they can't get the district. Tola had a question in the chat about um, not putting anything higher than 295. Um, I don't know why um, the district would limit that. Um, there, uh, so I would email Nicole um, Keller that specific question um, because there must there might be uh, a reason why. Because I know on your taxes you can say that you're going to put additional contributions. Um, as Katie can also attest, you can actually put money into your HSA card outside of the payroll deduction too. So um, if you wanted to do that. There is just um, there is just like an annual limit of how much money can be put in. So if they're telling you there's a limit, it might be that that's just what, I mean, that might be the annual limit yep. combined with the district contributions. Yep. So like I mentioned before, dental, vision, mental health, um, Katie actually says, uh, this, uh, the setter we have an, uh, the, or the, um, HSA card uh, that we have now with Fidelity has an app and you can actually scan, um, items at the, um, at the store and see whether or not your card will cover it. So that's kind of cool. Um, so tip, you know, how I have on here that there's penalty for taking money out for non-medical expenses. Uh, typically, the card will prevent you from spending stuff that's non-medical. I've I've gone to the cash register and tried to sp buy something that I thought, like, I think it was cold medicine, and it wouldn't go through on the HSA card. So Stephanie, did you do that with Fidelity or was that with Basic? Oh, that's because I don't believe that's true anymore. Oh, <laughs> based really? on an experience that I had. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Um because it's not an FSA card, it's an HSA card. So um, just 
we should be careful what we say because I believe you can buy whatever you want with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, I I know it's uh, that's yeah. Basic. I I could uh, I could uh, it would prevent you. Um. So and then what happens sometimes too is that the um, HSA or Fidelity might come to you and ask for a receipt sometimes um, to prove um, what your expenditure are. I had to do that with my eyeglasses. I had to just scan them a receipt of my from my doctor. Okay, next. Okay, so here comes the money difference between HMO and HD and high deductible plan of how much is out of pocket. So for the HMO, a minimum out of pocket um, at the 456.93 rate of 12 months is $5,400. That's a minimum. That's not including copays. That's not including um, prescriptions or anything like that. Whereas with the high deductible plan, with the contributions from the district on Kaiser, the maximum out of pocket you are spending is. $600 as an individual and $1,800 as a family. So we had a question about the difference between the um, deductible and the out-of-pocket. So that's a $400 difference. So if you, if my experience, but I have Sutter and um, I think Sutter are my, the, the numbers are the exact the same. So for Kaiser, you're going to pay that extra $400 out of pocket. Um, I, if, if that's what they were saying from the district, I don't have that experience because I use Sutter and Sutter has the same out of pocket as well as, as the deductible. So that might be $2,400 out of pocket for a family. Um, so that is a lot cheaper still than the HMO and you're getting the same doctors, you're, you're, you're getting the same benefits. The only difference is that you're paying up front. And so um, in, in most medical plans also, like I had a $1,500 bill, I think in March um, for one of my um, doctors and I was able to put it on a payment plan. Um, and so that by doing that, it just came right out of my HSA card. And so what was being put into my HSA from payroll and from the district covered my plan. So I never paid anything out of pocket, um, even though I had that upfront cost. So yeah. if you if you don't get sick and you never go to the doctor on the uh, high deductible, does that mean that it's a wash that you don't pay anything? Yes. No, it means that you actually earn a lot of money. Yeah. You get to keep that twelve hundred or eighteen hundred dollars that you get from the district a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and and you're investing it, so you actually gain interest. So it's just like another stream of income, and it kind of works like a Roth IRA sort of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's let's be careful how we say this. So, um, I, I just you, you get to keep the money, but you, you don't get to keep the money to do whatever you want. You get to keep it in the health savings account yeah. to use for health expenses right. in the future. Yeah. 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 Yep. So okay. if you plan on retiring, uh, like I want to go out December of 24, you said you can only uh, have your contributions through July, then, through July. Then, yeah. then, then it'll stop. Yep but you're still allowed to be on the plan for the whole yep. year, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Yep. And you then whatever's left on the card uh, or on your HSA, you get to keep after you retire. Okay. And that thing about um, turning age 65 and having to stop the contribution six months before enrolling in Medicare, that... I would check with Nicole Keller if anyone is in that situation because it seems like a pretty strict rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Kaiser, the difference between Kaiser um, high deductible and Sutter deductible in, in, uh, is that the um, the once you meet your deductible, that's your same as out of pocket for um, for family and individual. So we don't have that difference. So Rick, you were asking about that difference. So Kaiser does have a $400 difference, whereas um, Sutter does not. 
So, so once I hit that third three, the last year it was three thousand dollars. This year it's thirty two hundred. But once I hit that three thousand, I never paid anything else again. So max out of pocket because we uh, and the only difference too, unfortunately, is that Sutter you get a little bit, you get five dollars less a month, which is you know what sixty bucks a year. So it's not that much difference. Um, so HMO minimum, you're spending 638 and for a high deductible maximum, you're spending as an individual is 400 and 1460 as a family. And then um, the Western Health high deductible, since Western Health HMO is so cheap, it's $0. Um, I would not recommend the high deductible for the Western Health because you you are paying out of money and they do have the same as Kaiser with the difference between um, out of pocket and uh, the deductible. So this is the only one. If like if you, if you do not go see the doctor very often, um, the Sutter high deductible or Kaiser high deductible is a good option, but. One of the best options is uh, Western Health. Only problem with Western Health, I don't know, there's not many people on it. I think they have less doctors available on Western Health and that's the only problem with that one. Just wanna address something in the chat real quick. Um, someone was asking about the contribution being 90, um, 100. That's actually um, tied back into uh, the Sutter increase uh, that we thought we were gonna see, but then they reversed. Mm -hmm. So you're right that that contribution was gonna be 90, but they actually bumped it back to 100 individual and 145 for family. So Sutter like is trying to help us out. Yeah, initially, when we first, like in the insurance committee, we when we first got these numbers way back in uh, July, it was only going to be $10 for Sutter, high deductible. Ah, but uh, no, 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 luckily, they're back to their normal, 100, 145. So we're good, we're good. So those are the different cost things here. So um, when it comes to the HSAs also, you know, um, we, we get this tax benefit that lowers your uh, your um, overall adjusted net, um, gross income. So your AGI is decreased by contributing to the HSA plan um, or HSA card um, in your payroll. Um, so it lowers, it's a, it's a pre-tax contribution, so it lowers your taxable income. So which means at the end, um, so you're going to pay less taxes. Um, so it's a, it's a it's a double benefit, and uh, the earnings that um, that you um, get from the interest just roll back into your HSA card, and then you get to use them um, for medical expenses and any distributions, you know, for for medical expenses also aren't taxed. Okay. Um. And then I think this, is this your, oh no, this is. I can do it if you want. Oh yeah. So, I mean. It's just the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Just shows you a little bit what that estimated tax savings is. Um, so it's a, it, it, it could change, you know, especially when you're in one bucket or not, it could. Uh... So somebody, Jennifer asked, is that taxable on our California income? Yes, um, the hundred dollars a month is taxable on California income. It, it does show up on on there. It's a separate line item. Okay. See you soon. Mm -hmm. So good question. So that's the only difference is that you do get taxed um, for that contribution. Okay, this is going to be Katie's slide. This is her examples. Okay, yeah, I made this example. Now, actually, um, maybe um, before I do the example, Stephanie. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask a question that I think um, I want to make sure that we um, answered the question someone was asking before about the difference between the out-of-pocket max and the deductible. So when I look at the Sutter high deductible plan, um, full details of coverage for the Sutter high deductible plan, after you meet the deductible, you pay $0, 0% for everything, except you have to pay $50 if you get admitted to the hospital. That's it. So someone asked, why is there a difference? Why, like the Sutter family out of pocket maximum is like $6,000 and the deductible is $3,000. And whoever was asking that, I forget who asked, but 
Rick, um, you're right that there's, yeah, Rick, there's a difference between those things. Um, and I asked Nicole Keller, um, or maybe it wasn't Nicole, maybe it was whoever um, had her job previously. I don't remember. But when I first started working here, I asked, why is that? You know, because it seems like you're saying that you don't really pay anything after the deductible, but then there's this out of pocket max thing. Why is it so high? And I think that um, that is set as part of the plan, but then they only have to choose one thing that you're required to pay for after you meet the deductible. And for Sutter, they chose admission to the hospital, which is $50. So unless you're getting admitted to the hospital constantly, or you have like a lot of kids and they always go to the hospital for like a chronic condition or something kind of unusual, even though technically you would still have that one cost of the $50 after you met the deductible, it would be like an unusual situation for someone to end up having to pay that enough to reach the out-of-pocket maximum. And there's the actually thing I... insurance you can buy that's pretty cheap per month through Voya for that kind of a thing. If you have, let's say, cancer and you're in and out of the hospital for whatever, you can actually make money if you get that well, sort of. Or you have like an accident prone child or something like that. You can pay for a, like a little bit extra insurance for that if you wanted to. Yeah. So the, the other thing though about the difference between the out of pocket maximum and the deductible is that when I look at this, um, maybe a lot of people are more interested in the Kaiser one. So I opened the Kaiser one. For some reason, the enrollment benefits site seems to um, still show the one for last year. But when I look at this one for Kaiser, it says that... Um, after you meet the deductible, the thing you would have to still pay is not hospital admission, but $10 for a 30-day supply of generic tier one medication. So each plan, each high deductible plan, you probably want to look at this little summary thing that I just put in the chat for the Kaiser one, or you could look at it for the better one. Each plan has to have a thing, apparently, that they charge you for after you meet the deductible. That's just like part of the rules of these plans. Um, but that would be the only thing you would still pay after you met the deductible. And so Stephanie's saying she doesn't pay anything. Well, that's because she's not getting admitted to the hospital every day on the Sutter plan. Um, someone who was on the Kaiser plan, I guess, um, would still pay $10 for the medication for a 30-day supply. That's what this seems to be saying. And could you use your HSA account to pay for that? Yes, you okay. could. You, <laughs> awesome. you, you could. You could just take that that. HSA card right to the pharmacy and just use it to pay the copay. Yes. Anyway. Okay. So I just wanted to say that before I do this example, I apologize if that was um, a distraction from the example. Here's an example that I made based on kind of like how this works for me when I use this plan. So I made it a simplified version. Um, okay. So you're on the high deductible health plan. You pay $0 for the premium. So there's no money that's taken out of your paycheck to pay for healthcare. Um, and then you receive this $100 a month district contribution to your HSA. They just put it in there for you. Um, like Stephanie said, it was it goes in there um, pre-federal tax, but they still take out California tax for it. You still have to pay California tax on it. Um, so it goes in there. It's $1,200 a year for this individual coverage. Um, and then what happens? It's kind of like if you're not familiar with this, this might be helpful to see how it works. So what happens is then... Um, if I want to, I can put extra money in. I can sign up when I enroll in the benefits to put extra money in per month through payroll. Like I could say I want to put in $80 a month through payroll, and that's like $960 a year. And then they take it out of my paycheck, pre-federal tax, but you still pay California tax, and they send that to the HSA at Fidelity. So all the money is in there. The district contribution is in there, and the payroll deduction that I signed up for is also in there. And then I, the employee, can also optionally just directly take money and put it in the HSA at any time. Um, it's kind of similar to contributing to an IRA. You go on and it's like, do you want to contribute money? And then it's like, this is the annual limit. Be sure you don't put in more than that with all of the amounts combined from your employer and what you're going to add now. And then you like deposit money into it. So if I wanted to, I could put $500 into it. Like, let's say I went to the dentist and they said, you have all these stress-related issues with tooth grinding and you need a dental guard <laughs> and they said that they said that the dental insurance wouldn't pay for the dental guard and that it would be five hundred dollars well then i can take the five hundred dollars and deposit it into the hsa um, and then i can deduct that five hundred dollars when i do my taxes um, from my federal taxes and then i can use the hsa card to pay for the dental guard hypothetically so if this all happens then um, 
that would be a total of $2,660 per year that was put in to the HSA, and that would be pre-federal taxes, but it's still taxed by California. Then, once the money is in there, it's in the HSA, as Stephanie mentioned, infidelity, it's kind of like a high interest savings thing. It's not called high interest savings, but it's basically similar to that. It's like a savings that earns interest. So maybe it would earn like $52 of interest. Then when you go to your taxes, um, that $52, you have to put it on your California tax return because it's taxable income in California, but not on the federal taxes. And when I do it, I'm like doing my taxes online and it asks you all these questions and stuff. And then at the end, it starts asking you really weird stuff. You know, it's like, how many farm animals do you own? Are you, did you earn your income from fishing? And you're like, no, no, I don't live in Alaska, all this stuff. Well, then there's a question in there that you might not have noticed before. And it's like, did you earn any income from a health savings account? And that's where you type the $52. Um, okay, so then it's like, how will it work when I'm spending the money on healthcare? So I'm going to be paying $0 for things that are considered preventative care. So if I like, even before I meet the deductible, if I like get a preventative test or I like go get a flu shot or whatever else is counted as preventative care, I don't pay for that anyway. You still don't pay for that even if you haven't met the deductible. So um, you don't pay anything for preventative care if it's officially considered preventative care ever. Um, and then the things that aren't preventative, like regular health care, you use the HS money, HSA money, or you can use it, you don't know, have to, no one's going to force you to, but you can use it to pay for those costs. So like, let's say that I get a prescription. Um, and I'm, I'm using this example, because you pay those other costs at what is like the, the rate that the insurance company gets for um, those services not at the rate that an uninsured person would pay and I didn't understand this when I first signed up for this it was confusing to me and now I do understand it which is why I'm explaining it to you um, so you might think when you hear that you have to pay for all the costs until you meet the deductible that the cost you will be paying is like the cost that is advertised to the general public or like the cost that would be um, paid by someone who is uninsured but that is not true because you still have insurance so like on Sutter, um, if I go to the pharmacy, the pharmacy will tell me like this prescription is $146 and that is their like list price for how much it would be if I didn't have insurance. But then when I give them my insurance and they bill the insurance, the insurance rate for that medication is lower because the insurance companies negotiate these lower rates for things. So the insurance rate for the medication is $67.13. And that is what I have to pay, the $67.13 until I meet the deductible. So even though you're paying the costs yourself, um, you're not paying like the, <laughs> the unnegotiated rate. Or like this is an actual example of Sutter. Um, I looked at a bill from Sutter and it said that the doctor's office vis visit would have cost $234, but the insurance negotiated rate was $180.17. And that is what I had to pay for my non-preventative doctor's visit. So you go through the year, you're paying this stuff till you meet the deductible, then you stop paying for anything except for whatever is listed on your insurance plan as the one thing or whatever that you still pay for, if it's medications or if it's hospital admission, I guess, depending on the plan. And that one thing that you still have to pay after the deductible, you would still have to pay, but nothing else. So that's that's my example based on a Semi true story. <laughs> yeah, you muted Stephanie. And one thing. So, when it comes to the pharmacy step two, so there's a way to trick the system as well. Um, if you get one of those coupon cards from the, um, the pharmaceutical company, or we got in the mail, I think you might have that, Rebecca, at the end of your thing. We got in the mail from the union uh, this 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 card that we can use for lower prescription prices. So you can go to the pharmacy. They're going to bill the insurance the sixty seven dollars. So they're going to think that the insurance is paying that you are paying sixty seven dollars, but you have a coupon. The insurance company doesn't know you have a coupon, so your out of pocket is actually even less but your insurance is being charged $67. I know this, that is true because I have a medication that costs $1,200 a month. And as an individual, I used to meet my deductible 
within a month and a half, just by two months of my prescription. But I had a coupon. I was only paying $250 for the medicine, but the insurance got billed $1,200. So I would, you know, I, I didn't have, it didn't go off what I actually paid because the, the pharmacy did not tell them about, tells the insurance company about the coupon. So there's ways to also trick the system. So are you, are you saying that you, you hit your out of pocket maximum without actually having to pay that out of pocket? Yes. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Yes. That's and then, unfor cool. then unfortunately, what do they do? They put that medication because the medication went uh, generic. So then boom, my, my, my lovely little plan went away. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately that happened this year. They, it went generic this year. So. Okay. I see that, that Rick has a question now. Yep. Rick. Thanks. I, I'd like to please, thank you so much for doing this. I'd like to sort of ask the a version of the question was asked previously, which is sort of why is, why is Kaiser so expensive and Sutter so cheap? But I'd like to ask it, please, as the why is the HMO so expensive and the HDHP so advantageous? And let me, let me put a little bit of a fine point on this, right? So if we weren't with the Kaiser traditional HMO, we would be paying $5,483.16 more per year, right? Mm -hmm. If we take the HDHP, worst case scenario, we hit the plan deductible for families three thousand six hundred dollars, right? So it costs us three thousand six hundred dollars rather than fifty four eighty three sixteen. Worst worst case scenario, you hit the out of pocket maximum, which for a family is seven thousand two hundred dollars. Now the seven thousand two hundred dollars is more than the five thousand four hundred eighty three dollars and sixteen cents, right? Are you with me so far? I'm with you. Yep, it is. It okay. would be very hard to meet that, but I guess if you if you guys had a big family and like a ton of prescriptions, there's tons of prescriptions, then maybe. Yeah. Right. I hear you. It is really hard to hit. By the way, on the prescription thing, the right to it was, Kaiser breaks it down into three tiers: tier one, two, tier two, tier three. You gave the example of tier one just for completeness' sake, so folks know they're also tier two and tier three, and those are more expensive. Could be fifty or sixty dollars. So, uh, that's all. In, in in the details of paperwork, right? So uh, totally agreed, right? I'm I'm not healthy. Me, my wife's not healthy. We have Kaiser HMO. We have co-pays for the prescriptions now, and we have trouble hitting six hundred dollars out of pocket for a year with a traditional HMO, right? So those six hundred would go on top of the thirty six hundred plan deductible if we went to the HDHP, right? So it sort of seems too good to be true, right? Sort of, would you rather pay 548316 for the same services or would you rather pay 3600 and let's add the co-pays in there, right? And make some reasonable assumption. It's actually you're, you're not reasonable. paying co-pays. You know, after you meet the $3200, you're not paying co-pays. Only like Katie said, I'm sure you still are on the drugs. No, only nope. only the drug. Yeah. It's only the, yeah, the, drugs, on the, yes. the ten dollars on the drug. So right, yeah. And those are. Am I using the wrong term? Aren't those copays on the drugs? Uh, I guess so. I, I yeah. Okay, so you are All still right. paying copays, although only on the drugs, right? So yes. Look, it, I agree with you, it, Katie. It seems like it's going to be really hard to rack up a big bill on prescription only copays after mm -hmm. you hit that out of pocket, right? So. This sort of, it, it seems like there must be something we're missing, right? Because it seems like Kaiser's crazy for chasing us out of the HMO. The only thing they're getting is that we're paying up front, right? Otherwise, they should want all healthy people in the HMO to pay them the additional premium and hardly use any services, right? And even people who are who have poor health it looks like, are financially better off with the HMO, unless they've got a really serious prescription drug habit, mm -hmm. right? Well, so yeah, I, I follow exactly what you're saying. We've talked about this many times amongst ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. With Kaiser, it's very hard to understand how someone would come out ahead financially um, on the HMO with these particular two plans. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and it does seem too good to be true, but it really isn't. I, <laughs> you know, like I said, I, you know, I meet my, I usually, you know, cause I do have health issues and um, I usually meet my deductible by May or June and I literally pay nothing the rest of the year, no matter how much medical issues I have. Um, well, not if you go to the hospital, Stephanie. What well, if I get admitted to the dollars. hospital, I haven't been admitted to the hospital. That's one thing I haven't had yet. Okay. I haven't been admitted to the hospital, but I've gone to ER and I don't pay for anything. Are there, is, is there anything catastrophic that we're missing, right? So none of us have talked about how much our chemo cost us on the HDHP or. It's, right? it's covered. It, I've, I've gotten MRIs, CT scans. Yeah. It's, it yeah. was, and, and, you know, um, and the school used to actually do a thing about, you know, for like uh, pregnancies and all the costs that go with the pregnancy, HMO yeah. compared to high deductible, high deductible. Mm -mm, when she meet, when she meet the deductible, it, it, it seems too good to be true. I agree, but. I, I will say, Rick, that um, most people don't want to switch. The majority of our people are still on Kaiser HMO. They don't like switching. It's paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are just scared of doing something new. Um, there is a few more steps to the high deductible, you know, with the HSA card and stuff that uh, a lot of people just don't want to even fool around with it. And uh, mm -hmm. to the, you know, Kaiser's benefit. So that's probably why we're doing this. It's to be like, hey, switch. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the other thing is, you know, it is like, like Rebecca says, it is an extra step. You get a bill, like I get a bill and the bill is $180 and then I have to pay the bill on time. Right. Um, you know, I don't pay a $20 copay or whatever it would have been when I'm at the doctor. They send me the bill in the mail and then I have to pay it with the HSA card. And technically you're supposed to save the receipt, I think, for tax reasons. So some people probably don't want to deal with that hassle. And, um, and, you know, if you did have a lot of expenses, I could see that, uh, although financially it might not be better to be on the HMO. Maybe it would be simpler for some people, so they might prefer it for that reason. Yeah. And I've also, um, you know, like I've also wondered about this stuff before and kind of looked into research about it. I'm just, I was just interested. And, um, you know, I read some stuff that said, well, the, the theory behind it is that when people are on an HMO, and they can go to the doctor for a very low cost, like $20. They just go to a lot more doctor's appointments than if they had to pay $180. So maybe like if I was on the HMO, I might go to the doctor every time I had a cold because it's only $20 or something. Whereas now I might be like, oh, I'll wait a few days and see if I get better. And so that I think that that idea is that maybe the plan saves money because people use a little bit less care in situations like that. Because the... Sure. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. That made perfect sense. So basically, there's there's probably behavioral truth here that if you say, hey, it's going to cost you a thousand bucks to do this in, in January, that you become sort of dishabituated to, to doing it, right? And then by the time you hit the deductible, you've already got your, your behavior in place, right? So, and, and that's only for the first year, you know, because if you contribute and you contribute more over than your, the, the deductible the next year you don't have that issue right good just want to throw one thing out there for folks who have poor cash flows there is a disincent right so if it's possible if you're on the hdhp that you would even hit your plan deductible in your first month right that you'd be asked to ante up to three thousand six hundred but most some, yeah but most most, most, most yeah, but most health company healthcare will do a payment plan. I so see. You're not, you so mean? you're not paying the three thousand. Like I said, I had a fifteen hundred dollar bill in March. Put me on a payment plan, and I and it just it's it, it's matched out of my uh, contribution from the district. So I don't pay. I I didn't have to pay the fifteen hundred dollars in March, even though it wasn't in my HSA account. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. The alternative too, and this is what I did in the beginning when I first switched, because the first year I worked here, I had regular HMO Sutter. Then I saw the HDHP, HSA thing, and I was like, wait, this is like you, it's a better deal for me no matter what, pretty much. So I wanted to switch to it, but I had a lot of these same concerns. And one of my concerns was like, well, what if something happens to me? You know, I don't have a lot of healthcare expenses usually, but what if I did? What if I get like hit by a car in January or something, you know, and I need to pay all 
whatever it was back then, like $2,800 at once. Um, so when I first signed up, like I, remember I mentioned, you can put money in the HSA yourself. You can contribute and get a tax deduction you know, for that later on instead of contributing through payroll. So when I first opened it, I put the money in. I was like, yeah, $2,800 going in, took it out of my savings account, put it in the HSA. I didn't need it. This was like years ago. It's still in there. But then I never had to worry about that. So I think we have uh, a couple good options here. One is the payment plan idea that Stephanie has used. And then the other one is my thing where you can just put the money in up front for that year. Yeah. Um, if you get, if you want the years where we get a retro check, you could just put a chunk of that in and don't have to worry about it. And then yeah. like Stephanie said, you have a payment plan if you do get like a big thing. So you're never, uh, it's unlikely that you would ever have to just like give them a bunch of cash at once. Mm -hmm. So um, Araceli, what's up? I just had a, a, I switched from Kaiser uh, back in whenever it was in the spring when I saw the the increase starting July one. So I I was like, I'm, 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 I'm done. I don't want to do this. <laughs> um, and I switched over to just the Sutter plus HMO. And now I'm trying to, and this is why I came today, because I'm trying to figure out, okay, how, but now that I know that it's not going to go up again, like I thought it was, um, it's about roughly $636. I think I did the math uh, around mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Continue for the whole year. Would the, would the high deductible still make more sense? And that's the part that I'm, I, I, I see people going, yes, this is kind of how it works. It would still make more sense for someone that doesn't really go to the doctor very often. And uh, if you don't go to the doctor, I would say yeah. do the high deductible for Sutter for because sure. um, here is the Sutter one. Uh, if you're, I'm assuming your family, you do the family one. It's a family of four. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So you do this one. The max you would pay is fourteen sixty, but that's only if you go to the you and your family go to the doctor a lot. Um. Well, wait, wait. So the max you would pay is fourteen sixty, but right. remember, when you go to the doctor on the high deductible plan, you pay like for it. So maybe it would be between a hundred and four hundred dollars, depending on the doctor. Yeah. Maybe right. as an individual, it would make more sense. As a family, it's it's about even it's, yeah so uh, what i'm saying is that you could still make money um from the district mm -hmm. contributions if you don't use it all yeah so yeah. it's kind of it's kind of up to you to be honest um you it, yeah I you see can that. you can like save some money and mm -hmm. do stuff i personally am going to stick with the center hmo because i find that to be a reasonable thing for me right okay but, yeah yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I, I got to go, but thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Michelle. Yeah. So for those of you that have the HSA cards, do they issue enough for the whole family or is mm -hmm. it just one card that you get? Nope. You can, you can get multiple cards. Thank you. Perfect. You also, oh, sorry, just about the card question. Um, you also don't have to use the HSA card. You can pay for things with your credit card or with a check or whatever you want, and then reimburse yourself from the HSA account. So the HSA card is, I think a lot of people find it convenient, but it's totally optional. And if you like find yourself without it and you're like paying for a medical expense, you can just so you can just you can, reimburse yourself the money you later. Just get, use a credit card, which just gives you like one to 2% back on your so you could even make yes. more money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yes. what I do. Because, yeah. Yes. Awesome. All right, Gordon. Oh, can you show the Kaiser high deductible, high plan uh, numbers again? Yeah. And tell Susan I say hi. I will. <laughs> hey, Gordon. <laughs> Okay. How would you pay yourself back? How does that work? Because you need, you said you need uh, to prove an invoice for the- No, you, well, get. so let me, let me tell what I do. And then Stephanie can say if she feels that what I'm saying is not correct. So um, back when there was basic Pacific, um, it was a little bit harder, but now that we have Fidelity, there is a website that you can make an account, fidelity.com, you log in. It's like, this is your health savings account. And there are things you click on you know, like any other website. And one of them is a button that you can click on to like withdraw the money from the HSA and put it into your bank account. And then it tells you, reminder, you better have spent this on medical expenses because that's required. 
it has never in the entire time I've had Fidelity, Fidelity has never asked me to upload a receipt. And my understanding of HSAs was that you're responsible, not the provider for keeping the receipt, like in case there's ever like a tax question about it. Um, but I've never had to upload the receipt in order to reimburse myself at Fidelity. Stephanie, is that incorrect? Have you had to no. do that at Fidelity? No, but I, I've only used the HSA card. Um, you've just taught me something new that I, I think it's awesome. So yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think I have the website, have I have the, the website I, I, <laughs> and I like to earn 2% interest on my credit cards. So that's there's it. also an app, the Up Fidelity, um, you know, they have an app, Basic Pacific, which some of you may have used, had an app, but their app didn't work in my experience. But the Fidelity app is like works because Fidelity is like a normal company. So their app works. And it's really easy. You go on and it's like reimburse yourself, I think, is the button on the app. And then you type in the exact amount of the expense and make sure you type it exact because you don't want to like accidentally take out the wrong amount. <laughs> and then it's like, what bank account do you want this to go to? And you just do it. It's kind of it's like it's very straightforward. OK, thank you. Um, Gordon, did we did you have any questions about this slide or do you just want to see it? No, I just I, I think when we got to it, I was still figure trying to figure out HDHP. Yeah, it wasn't always. making much sense. But when we got to the examples, yeah, I, I just wanted to go back and see these numbers again. No, oh, absolutely. I don't understand how to read this slide. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, what's up, Diane? Hi, I have a question about the high deductible plan for Kaiser and the district's um, contribution to the HSA. It's 150 a month. Is that 12 months? Yes. Okay. Well, so even if you do the 10 month paychecks, they yeah. still give you 150. So what happens months. is in June, you're going to get double and in sept in the August payment, you get double. So, so oh, oh, okay. that's how they cover. That's how they are. The, I mean, the May paycheck, the May paycheck, they get double. Like, so it covers May, June and the August paycheck, you get double, which covers July, August. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, Rick. Go for it, Rick. Thank you. So I just had a question for you about some of the math here on this slide and trying to double check my understanding from that uh, other workshop. So I, I think we're agreed. I'm just looking at the disclosure form part one, principal benefits for Kaiser Permanente HSA qualified high deductible health plan. Um, family coverage plan deductible 3,600 plan out of pocket maximum 7,200, right? There's this weird category on that principal benefits form of family coverage, uh, in addition with a 3,600 out of pocket and a 3,200, uh, plan deductible, right? And then there's the clear case again of the self-only coverage, 3,600 out-of-pocket max, 1,800 plan deductible, right? So if we run with the family, then if we're just looking at plan deductible, it's 3,600, the district kicks in 1,200 for an HSA. 18 so for family, 18 for family. Kicks in 18, oh, I, I see, I see where my math went wrong. Super, super. But that assumes that there's no cost beyond the deductible. And actually the cost can go up in theory to $7,200, which is the out of plan maximum. Although we have all agreed that it is unlikely to do that. Uh, it would, it could, however, reasonably be expected to exceed it by a couple of hundred dollars. Yeah, I'd say that's true for Kaiser because of what you're what you're asking about the um, prescription drugs. The one thing I want to say, and I don't know why the district's benefits site does this, but when I op when I go on their benefits site and down open this disclosure form part one thing, which is what they provide us when we enroll in benefits, this is where I got this from. It says this is the plan um, that is through the end of 2023. So it is, I guess, technically possible that there is going to be a difference between this and the last one. I'm not sure why they would leave the old one up if um, there was going to be any change. Now, Rebecca and Stephanie were on the committee that knows about the changes, so they could tell us if there was going to be any change. I don't think so. 
Okay. We, tried, we kept everything the same for what okay. was on the itemized stuff. So it should look the same. But yeah, I mean, Rick is right. Rick, let, let me tell you something. When we made this, um, we we weren't thinking very in detail about the, the extra couple hundred dollar cost for the medications that someone on the Kaiser high deductible plan could still pay after they had met the deductible. And you're right about that because it does say like, okay, there is, um, you know, tier two medication, uh, $60 for 100 day supply, and then $50 for specialty tier four medication. So like, I guess if someone had a lot of those, it could, it could happen. Um, that could happen. So we should, we should make sure everybody is aware of that, that technically, um, technically, um, there could be cases where someone takes like a lot of medications or very expensive medications where this could add, you know, like you said, I think a few hundred dollars. So really the maximum is technically the maximum that you would pay is the out-of-pocket maximum. Like on Sutter, the maximum that we would pay is the out-of-pocket pocket maximum. Like if I somehow got it admis admitted to the hospital every week mm -hmm. um, on the Sutter high deductible plan. I mean, obviously that's kind of, it sounds kind of silly, but if I did, mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's $2,500 a year that I'd be paying. Um, so I, I could end up paying like almost, almost $6,000 a year on the Sutter plan. So we may want to point out just like on the slide, in some way um, that that could Absolutely. hypothetically happen. Hypothetically. Mm -hmm. Well, can and you, with, the, with the medications, it's a little more easy to see how it could happen on the Kaiser one, yeah. Can you yeah. show that slide that you were referring to about the tiers? Because what you have up is just talking about the deductible. There's no slide, it's this document here. I put it in the chat. Um, it's, it's the thing, when you go on the open enrollment on the district's benefit website and you click each health plan, it like will let you open up the details of each one. And I went on there and pretended like I was going to enroll in Kaiser, which I'm not going to do, but I just did it to get this document. Um, and this is the document I'm talking about that it lists what you pay. So where it says you pay no charge after deductible, no charge after deductible, no charge after deductible. Eventually, if you go down, it talks about prescription, prescription drugs, and then it has you would for most generic medication is ten dollars that you would still pay for thirty days or twenty dollars for a hundred day supply. But then on the next page it says there are some kinds of expensive medications that are um, brand name or specialty item. So these are amounts that if a person was on the high deductible plan, they would still end up paying those costs for the um, prescription drugs, even after they met the deductible. Okay. Cool. And Thank I think what, what Rick is pointing out and asking about is like, wouldn't, couldn't this add up to a few hundred dollars? So shouldn't we include that in the maximum possible amount? And yes, we probably should have done that. I actually, um, I have, I have no defense of the fact that we didn't, you're right. It could be, it could happen that there would be yeah, a few hundred dollars of medical expenses. I actually had just assumed before I looked at this, that the Sutter one and the Kaiser one were the same and that they only charged for um, hospital admission, but apparently not. Katie, so, somebody's somebody right asking if you can do the, the Sutter deductible. So, you can, so the Sutter deductible one shows that it's only the $50 copay for the ha hospital admission. After, right. Yeah. So can I just double check really quickly? I know I just asked about the out-of-pocket maximum. So the out-of-pocket maximum would be so the deductible is 1800 staying with the Kaiser um, document you just showed us, uh, plus whatever prescription drugs one might. So the, the absolute maximum would be the $3,600. And I know, no? No, because if you're talking about individual, the district's individual. giving you $1,200. So the individual max of the deductible is $1,800. So you're paying $600. I and was this just going may to be a possible $1,800 more on top of that. So the maximum could be $2,400 on the, on the Kaiser, not 3,600. Cause you got to take out thank the 1200 that the district is giving. Thank you, Stephanie. And I was just about to finish my sentence with oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, saying, I'm so sorry. <laughs> by saying, yeah, I know that Katie said you were taking that out, but just looking at the document, right? Not taking into account the, the district uh, contribution. Yeah, I get it. Which is still, yeah. and this is the case you're making all along here. 
that by the time you pay, I don't know, 500 something per month times 12 months, um, it's just a whole different, yeah. And this is sort of too good to be true story. That's, that's the end, end of it all. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. You're yeah. Welcome. So, I apologize for cutting you no, off. No, no, that's okay. I, I, I get excited. No worries. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Do you want to do a few more slides, folks? All right. Get just a little bit more to go. Then the pain will be over, I promise. Mm -hmm. All right. Part-timer insurance. Again, the uh, there's no HSA contribution from district, but you can have a HSA if you want. However, you have to pay HSA maintenance fees, but only if you leave the district or you get hired somewhere else so you don't work here anymore. So you'd have that money, but it would actually get slowly chipped away. So that's not cool. Um, let's see here. Open enrollment for part-timers is in August or fall, January for spring. There's an FTE load premium calculator right here. Um, this one, it still says fall. Um, they're going to adjust it for spring, but you would go in to that and you would just put like, um, 0.4 or whatever your FTE that you're going to teach. And it will give you um, a breakdown of what they assume or they're not assume they're what they think the, the premiums will be. If you have more questions, I would talk to Nicole Keller because it gets a little tricky for me. Um, retirement. So I've had a lot of people talk asking about retirement insurance. Um, it's really different depending on how old you are. So if you are um, under 65 and you retire, you can retire actually um, with a pension here at 55 if you want. You could technically retire from Los Rios whenever. You just may not be financially advantageous. For um, HMO for Kaiser, if you're under 65, it would cost you $1,400 a month. Or if you're trying to, to um, have, um, like if you retire at 55 and you still have like teenagers at home, you would have to pay $3,149 a month, which is obviously horrifying. Okay. So um, there's not a lot of great news, to be honest, with this. Um, you could, you know, go to one of the other ones that's a little bit better, like Sutter, um, for example, but you could look for co covered California. You could, if you hopefully have a spouse that still has good insurance, which is kind of what me and my wife did because she um, retired early and she's under my insurance. Um, you can go through covered California. It's not great, okay? Um, there's you can do a high deductible plan um, with an HSA, HSA as well, um, which is a little bit better for some of them. Not much. You still actually have to pay this premium on top of contributing to the HSA, so it's still hot garbage. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not you know not super great if you're under sixty five and retire for this insurance. You could seek it elsewhere. There's actually insurance you can get through the union as well, but I did not price it out. Um, if you are 65 or older and you want insurance, it's actually pretty great, I think. So if you um, if you are just a single person, you're the only one who's using the Medicare Advantage. If you're 65 and older for a Kaiser HMO, they actually give you, the district will give you $82 a month to be on it. Um, and But if you're, you know, you have a dependent or a spouse or something, you would only pay 168 a month. So... Um, and then there's a couple other options here. Okay, there's you can even do a PPO. People are always asking us about that. You can finally do it in retirement if you wish, although it is pretty expensive if you have dependents. Okay, so we have some common questions, which I think we covered here pretty much. But if you do switch to an H a high deductible plan um, in in the same in network, so Kaiser or Sutter or whatever, you most likely can keep um, your doctor. Um, well, that's what all of us have personally experienced. I don't think we can actually guarantee it, um, but it's most likely you will. Okay. Can you opt out of health insurance? So let's say you just don't want it, or you're you are under a spouse, or you have insurance through some other way, you can opt out and receive a hundred dollars a month. Um, if you have a spouse in Los Rios, um, it's kind of basically the same thing. One of you will opt out and you'll get $100 a month. Um, double coverage is a thing, but it's complicated and it doesn't work very well, in my opinion. And it's um, you need to talk to Nicole Keller because it goes beyond my understanding, to be honest. Yeah, and just to warn everybody about the double coverage thing, the reason I brought it up to begin with um, was 
if you have to remember that if you get on one of these high deductible plans, you cannot have other health insurance coverage. You can't like sign up for the high deductible plan and also be covered on someone else's regular HO MO plan. Like it would, it would not, they're not compatible. So um, if you do switch to the high deductible plan and you had double coverage before, you would have to be very careful about that. Yeah. So on this one, there's an FAQ sheet that just has some of the questions people often ask us. And then these are, these links, uh, they link to the stuff that, you know, we've been talking about if you want to do a deep dive uh, like Rick. <laughs> um, retirement benefits, that's all the stuff about where I got the numbers from the retirement um, insurance, and there's other stuff in there too. Um, we mentioned this, American Federation of Teachers. If you are, are an LRCFT member, you are also part of the American Federation of Teachers Union, and you can get additional coverage for like almost anything you could possibly think about. Um, so there's more medical coverage there if you want to look into that. Um, I know sometimes people like our vision insurance to me isn't that great, but it's like one of the better, like it's as good as it can be. Um, you can get like additional coverage, I believe. Um, legal stuff, let's say you want to um, make a will, um, you know, you're going to put money in a trust, you're going to get divorced. You can actually pay for legal insurance and it'll be a lot cheaper for you to do those kinds of things. Um, we also have other benefits. So VOIA insurance. So like you have an accident prone kid, you're in, in and out of the hospital and you're tired of paying co-pays for that, you can um, go into the VOIA insurance pay. I, I can't remember what it is, but it's like cheap-ish. It's like $10 to $20 a month. And then they basically will like pay you a certain amount if that happens. So there's accident, critical illness, um, you know, chronic condition that you're in and out of the hospital a lot. Okay. Um, and there's also another uh, legal insurance th that we offer. Um, so there's one through the union and there's one through um, our benefits. So yeah, that's about most of it. Um, yeah, so I think at one point you might've said we could re we could retire whenever we want or something, but you, I think you do have to work for 15 years in the district, right, to get that? I believe so, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, Heike, Heike wanted to know. I think it says in the, it says somewhere in the contract how long I think you have, you to, have work. to have 15 years and be age 55. Yes, I think that's right. So I, yeah, that sounds right to me, but it does say it in the contract. I know that. So you could double check in the contract um, if you have a copy. It, it, Katie, thank you. I, I actually knew the answer. I just wanted to sort of remind everybody that that's what needs to be maybe shared. Sorry, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to. I should have thank not you. put it as a question, but more of a statement. I apologize. Yeah, no, you're good. Well, thanks for reminding me. I, um, you know, there's just, it's very complicated um, and I, I don't know all the answers. So at all. Any questions? I have exciting news. I found finally after this whole time of searching the 2024 version of these health coverage documents. And in fact, the Kaiser one is this is the same and says the same thing about the prescriptions. Excellent. Thank you. Cool. Quick question, Rebecca. I came in really late. Um, are you going to be sending out these a recording of this? Absolutely. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm wonderful. Gonna, I'm gonna Thank scam you. Everyone in the district, as usual. <laughs> hey. And then, will there be a new link that you send that uh, that you go to to actually, you know, get make your choice, or do we need to go back through the emails that have already been sent? Because I know. There's been two or three of them flying around already. To make your choice, what do you mean, like for the benefits? Yes. You just, you go to the benefits super site. So. Um, yeah, you have to go through the district for the benefits, not the union. Yeah. This website, um, benef mybenefitssite.com slash Los Rios. Yes, that one. And then you can just make your, your changes. And they have more details in there too, if you just want to like fool around. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So honestly, how hard is it to switch? It's easy. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I did it. Um, so when Susan retired, um, we had a qualifying event of her going off insurance and we just like 
did that clicked and then I just like clicked Sutter and I think the, the VSP dental click click and it was it was like five minutes. And so is that because I'm using Delta Dental? Would I be losing my dentist? No, they're separate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is just the medical part. The choose, you know, because the choosing your dental, choosing your vision is still separate. Okay. This has been so helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It, it was so confusing. This this uh takes away a lot of anxiety. Oh, good. You can also um email Nicole Keller. Um, and if you don't hear back from her, you can email one of us and we'll bug her for you. Yeah, we're your union reps. We're trying to make we're trying to make it slightly less terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Key has a question. Yeah, and I I apologize. You mentioned this earlier. The question about keeping your provider, you just call membership services, or how do you make sure that you can keep it? I I know you talked about it in the, the chat. I got sidetracked. Sorry. Okay, that's what I did, and I also just I actually asked my doctor while I had an appointment with her because I just even because it had reverted me to some random dude when I switched, oh. and I made an appointment with her just like I normally did. Um, and and then I just asked her, and she was like, "Yeah, just call member services, and and I'll I'll just when the it, like it goes to them to accept or deny. And she just said, I'll just accept it. Okay. Then right. I called member services and they were like, oh, we, I guess she had already done it or something. I didn't actually have to do anything further, but they were, it was very simple. Uh, but you're Sutter, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll double check with Kaiser. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This is great. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank so you. I I just clicked on that link you were talking about for the my benefits mm -hmm. and uh, went to my account, and then is there a place within that it, within my account that, that where I change my enrollment? Yeah, so, so you, just... you don't want to click on my account. It's a little confusing when you go to that page. Okay. Um, there's two things you can click on, and one says my account, and the other one is green, and it says enroll now. Okay. And you have to click enroll now. Okay. And that's basically it. If you click, I did that too. If you click my account, it goes to this thing. That's what you have now. And you're like, okay, but where do I enroll? Right. So is it just so, online enrollment, the little blue bar to the left where you say in, in, uh, enroll now? Once, well, so if you go back to the, the front page and you click the green button that says enroll now, and then, yeah, it takes you to this page and then you just click continue. And it's like, warning, you're going to need to have, you know, information about about yourself and stuff and then um it just walks you through it after that yeah okay. you can actually do either if you go if you do click on my account it it's the middle one with the shopping cart okay and it just takes you back to it actually, you know. it. no it doesn't mind mine just well i don't know what's wrong with mine mine just said 404 not available so maybe it's having an issue right now yeah of course of course it would yeah but great thank you mm -hmm. any other questions comments concerns so i was in there just trying to sign up and i have to give a reason and the, the only one i can think of is change essay election i think you might be on the wrong one if you have to give a reason uh did you pick like okay no i'm sorry i thought I'd, i well i clicked on next year's benefits but maybe it, it seemed to switch i think i got it now okay so i do have one other question i'm sorry um my husband just turned 70 so he now is uh, able to have medicare so do i still under there put married because i'm going to do an i'm only 62 i'm going to do an individual plan and he's going to do his thing now that he has social security? Um, it depends on what you want to do, I think. So don't quote me on this. This is not my area of expertise, but you okay. can be on your thing and you he can get an additional cover coverage with one of those, um, they're called Medicare Advantage plans. Um, and it, so it would go through you kind of. I that. think you should email Nicole Keller to ask her. Yeah. About you, that okay. because you do it the, here. So something that I was interested in that there is um, it, some of them, 
if they go through you, like you or your your spouse retires, so it, um, then you there's only these, there's some limitations basically. I would yeah email Nicole, but there's so, like, yeah. and what was your if she doesn't uh, respond because uh, to be honest, I did not I have not had good luck getting a hold of anybody at admin <laughs> I, on uh, on Spanos Court. What what name would I try to email? Just one of us, so me, um, Stephanie or Katie. Or, or a union rep that works at wherever you are. Okay, Stephanie, what's your last name? Rowe, R-O-W-E. R-O-W-E. Okay, and Katie? It's in, it's in our names in the, on the Zoom thing. Okay. I'm sorry, I clicked over onto oh. <laughs> the other thing, the link that you gave me, and so I, I wasn't. Yeah, no, so my I'm good child, the easiest to remember name. <laughs> and uh, we got Carberry and Rowe over there. Okay. Um, yeah, on the, the link, on the if you look at page 10, the retiree medical plans, it goes into a little bit um, retiree only coverage versus retiree plus spouse coverage, which I would read that section. Where is that section at to read? It's on page 10. Here, I'll share screen. Page 10 of what document? The link I just put in. Okay. So it's right here, retiree medical plans. If you look down here, so it sounds like you're in this category, retiree plus spouse. So, um, and I asked Nicole about this. Um, if you cover a spouse on your plan, you're, if either one of you turns 65, so if he's over 65, then this applies to you. So um, you, assuming you're under 60, 65, could remain on any of these plans. Um, and then the year spouse would um, go through the Kaiser one. If you don't want Kaiser, um, then you would stay on Sutter Western Health Advantage and your husband would get to choose from these other ones, if that makes sense. Okay, yes. And then so here- if, if we're doing the um, the high deductible, is that is it still off um, for you, him to do the Kaiser Senior Advantage? I, I really- would try to get in touch with Nicole about that because of the thing about how you can't contribute to an HSA if you are within six months of enrolling in Medicare. I mean, I know you're talking about covering yourself, but you would just really, like in terms of what you check, if you enroll in a high deductible health plan yeah, I don't and think you say you're married and it gets put to where you're doing the married contribution for the HSA, that's not... I think that isn't allowed, right, Stephanie? I'm not going to be turning 65. I'm just 62. I'm just going to retire at the end of next year, but he's 70. So yeah. So you, I, I just, year. I think that maybe you have to make, just make sure it's not family coverage then, right? Or is that how it would work? I think, I don't know for sure, but yeah. it well, just it looks, sounds like. It looks like you could stay under the high deductible plan, but he, yeah. he wouldn't. Yeah. Um, you yeah. got to make sure you're individual. Yeah. How but, that works in the, that's where we need to get Nicole. Nicole. Okay. I don't know how to sign up for that. Yeah. 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 All right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, it gets tricky a little bit, but yeah, it's sort of possible. Mm -hmm. All right. I thought 430. Um, so I'll, I'll hang out here until everyone leaves. If you know, if you have any questions, but um, yeah, I will we'll send the slides again to everyone and the video you will hear from me i will spam you once more <laughs> thank you for your time all of you yeah i'll stop recording yes thank you very much i appreciated it awesome